trigonometry worked exam questions um, where we're going to find the angle. So in this question we have right-angle triangle go straight into, we see the angle so we know it's trigonometry um, hypotenuse opposite the angle and adjacent um, if I write out the three formulas so we've got so ca Toa. Um, we are trying to find x, we know the opposite, we know the hypotenuse, we don't know the adjacent so we're not using anything with the adjacent in so that leaves me with the sine rule. So the sine of the angle x is the opposite which is 20 over the hypotenuse which is 230. Bring a calculator in because we need to do the sine to the minus 1. When we're finding the angle we need to use the inverse sine button. So shift sine 20 over 230. Always, oops, always close your bracket to avoid any errors. And that gives us an angle of 4.388541976. Now it doesn't say use any rounding so we could leave that I, I would recommend writing just what it says on the calculator but if you wanted to you could say that was 5 degrees or you could say it was four, uh, 5.0 either of those would be fine next question we're trying to find the size of the angle N let's call it N and in our triangle we have our hypotenuse we have our opposite side and we have the adjacent side and we are using the adjacent and the hypotenuse this time I could go the with the formulas again but eventually you'll start to know that that means cos of the angle which is n equals the uh, adjacent which is 14 over the hypotenuse which is 32 bring in the calculator and we need to do the inverse of 14 over 32 get n. Now the reason why these questions are th worth three marks is because you get one mark for picking the right formula so if you don't do any anything else if you can just pick out the correct um, trigonometric ratio to use sine cos or tan then you get one mark and you get one mark for putting the, the values in and then one mark for the answer so that's going to be 64 degrees to the nearest whole degree there's no need to be any more accurate than that. Could have been 64.1, but there's no need. Next, we've got uh, a triangle. This is our hypotenuse. This is our opposite side. This is our adjacent side. Um, opposite over adjacent is tan. So tan of the angle x equals opposite over adjacent. And uh, that means we need to do the tan to the minus 1 of opposite which is 16 over the adjacent which is 7 so inverse tan 16 over 7 oops see I did an error there wasn't paying attention inverse tan 16 over 7 close the bracket and we get 66.4 degrees okay first context question now quite a lot of the trigonometry questions on exams are just standard triangles and, then, and some of them they try to put them into a context which is essentially still the triangle there and it's usually drawn for you now this is the first part of a two-part question the second part I have done another video on finding the sides of a, uh, in a right angle triangle using trigonometry so you could look that one up if you want to see the second part to this which is slightly more tricky but this first bit is nice and easy we've got to find the angle x we give the opposite we've got the hypotenuse and the opposite so we're just going to use the sine of the angle x equals 3.3 over 4.1 and I didn't really even need to read the question I just could see the numbers and what we had to find so x is sine to the minus 1 3.3 over 
although I said I didn't need to read the question, I would strongly recommend you always do read the question because um, it takes quite a bit of experience to be able to see what to do without actually reading all the information. Oh, I keep putting that bracket at the bottom when I should put it there. Okay, so we've got 53.6 degrees. Next question. Calculate the size of the angle PRQ. PRQ is that angle there, I'm going to call that X. So we've got our opposite side and we've got the hypotenuse and we've got the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent is tan, so tan of X equals 11 over 24. So X is tan to the minus 1, 11 over 24. Bring the calculator in, shift, tan, 11 over 24, 24.6. And if you do enough practice on these questions, they become routine until you get something that's a bit different. Now this is uh, a harder question because it's embedded inside a circle theorems question. So this is a part B. So the first part was to do with the, the, the rules about circle theorems. Um, but let's see if we can do this. We've got to use the facts below to write down the value of y. So y is this angle here. This thing we need to know here is in circle theorems, this line here is a tangent. And tangents are always at right angles to the radius, which is 3. So this is our right angle triangle. This is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent. So this angle y opposite adjacent is the is the tan uh, tan of y equals the opposite which is 3 over the adjacent which is 4 so um, to find y we need to do tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 4 and tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 4 is this one so tan of 36.9 is 3 over 4 so tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 4 is 36.9 Use your anchor to work out Z. It's not really a trigonometry question now. This is back to circle theorems, uh, but I'll finish it off anyway. Um, you know that's uh, 36.9. So this angle, this part of the angle here, is going to be 90 minus 36.9. So um, we'll call that. Let's call that uh, x. So x equals. Um, 90 minus 36.9 is going to be 53.1 and the thing we need to know about circle theorems is that this, these two things are symmetrical this is a kite so those two angles are the same so z is going to be twice x which is tw 2 times 53.1 which is 106.2 OK, we're now moving into three dimensions, which makes the questions harder. Um, we've got to calculate the angle of elevation of T from Q. Uh, elevation is how far up something is pointing from the ground. So the angle of elevation is this angle in here, and we'll call that X. Now to find that, um, we need more information. We only have one side, so we could do with another side. Luckily, we have this triangle in the background here which will allow us to find this side, which I'm going to call H. Actually, no, better not call it H because that's a hypotenuse, isn't it? So we'll call it, let's call it something sensible, let's call it Y. So if I redraw that triangle here, poorly, we have Y, 29 and 50. So in this first part, we need to use, um, we need to figure out Y. So We've got the hypotenuse, we've got the opposite, we've got the adjacent side. So we're using um, the opposite and the adjacent, not the hypotenuse. So that's the tan of 29 equals the opposite, which is y, divided by the adjacent, which is 50. So y equals 50 times the tan of 29. Bring in the calculator. 50 times tan 
OK, so now we can use that value to work out the rest of the question. So that's our 27.7, which I've kept in the calculator. And we're trying to find x, and we've got on this right angle triangle with the hypotenuse, this dotted line, the opposite side is the y, the adjacent side is the 75. So we're going to use tan again, but this time we've got tan of x equals 27.7 and the rest divided by 75. So we've got our answer here. We're going to divide by 75 to get that ratio, that uh, fraction. And then we want to do tan to the minus 1 of that value 27.7 over 75 and shift tan answer equals 20.3 degrees okay one more this time um, we come from two different directions the angle of elevation of the top of the tower from point A is marked at X, calculate X. So we've got to find this angle. What do we know? We know this side. We know these are right angles because um, this is east, this is south, and this is vert straight up. Um, to find this angle, what we really need to do is find the height here, and then once and this length here and then we can use tan to the minus 1 to get x. So we'll start with the, the triangle BTC, so this side here. This is 18, so we want to find the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. We're not using the hypotenuse, so this is going to be a tan formula, so tan of 18 equals opposite, so we're trying to find over the adjacent 120 so the opposite is going to be equal to 120 times by the tan of 18 and that gives us 38.99 and some more so that's our 38.9 there. Now we've lost that answer, but I can type that back in in a minute. Um, to find this side here, I'm going to use uh, Pythagoras' theorem on this triangle. I'm going to look for that triangle from above, where I've got 140, 120, and I've got another value I'm going to call y to find there. So our c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is Pythagoras' theorem, tells us the hypotenuse 140 squared equals 120 squared plus y squared. So y squared is 140 squared, and I've got to take away the 120. So 140 squared minus 120 squared is that, and our answer is the square root of that. 20 root 13. I'm actually going to go I'm actually go back to the squared value and go um, to the square root of 5200. Zero, zero. Now we could put the decimals in there but it's not going to be a very accurate answer if we do that unless we take lots of decimal places. I'm going to try and leave the actual values in. So this is our square root of 5200 and we are trying to find this angle x, so the opposite side to x and the adjacent side to x, so we've got tan of x equals 38.9, that answer, divided by the square root of 5200, zero, zero, which was the answer to that bit. So we've got this answer divided by that answer, so let's just get the answer on the right again. 120 times the tan of 18 gives me that. I'm going to divide that by the square root of 5200, zero, zero. press equals, and I get 0.54 and a bit. I need to do the inverse tan of that to get the angle to get our answer. So x equals 28.4 degrees. Five marks.